Hey guys, welcome to the video. This is going to be the second video in my Ecotech swap video. This one, I'm really just showing you some things that I've been doing to the Ecotech and for preparation to getting the Ecotech in the Baja bug since I picked it up last weekend. Now, first and foremost, you can see just from looking at it that uh, in the evenings during this past week, I was working on just cleaning it up. This engine has 113,000 miles on it. I expect it to run. However, I don't want to just put a dirty engine in the back of that bug. I just can't do that. I have to have it cleaned up. I have to have it looking nice. I want to get it in there, get it running. If I need to do more to it at that point, that's fine. I can, but there's no way I would have been able to put just a dirty, greasy engine in the back of that bug. So during the week, I, uh, I took it apart, I took all the accessories off of it, I took all the, uh, I took the wiring harness off, I took all the um, sensors, I took everything off of it. I did, um, yesterday, on Saturday, I did take it out and I uh, scrubbed it down, I pressure washed it, let it dry, actually dried it up, and then I spray painted it with a light coat of engine paint silver, just to make it look more aluminum because um, even even though you know it's 10 years old even though I pressure washed it and cleaned it up it still had some corrosion on some things and it, you know it still had some age so I gave it a light spray of aluminum and then all week I've been taking sensors down into the basement and cleaning them up and drying them up and I took all the looming off of the wiring harness cleaned all that up washed that as well I have that spread out into the basement. It's drying and it's ready to go, but my next step, now that I've got the engine clean and easy to work with, is to purchase my transaxle adapter so that I can mount the engine to the transaxle. Once I have the engine mounted to the transaxle, and I think I'm going to purchase the adapter tomorrow. Once I have the engine mounted to the transaxle, then I can figure out where I'm going to install the ECU and then I'll be able to kind of lay the wiring harness out, start plugging it in to sensors and taking out the wires that I'm not going to need and then extending the wires. Like when it sits in the car, the ECU is right here. So the, the wires going to the ECU are really, really short. But when I have it in the bug, I'm actually gonna have the ECU inside the cab. It's not gonna be a lot farther away, but I'm going to need more wire. So I'll cut those wires, install the ECU where I want it. I'll extend the wires to get them over there. I'll also probably have to reroute a couple of things because it's gonna have some different exhausts and some of the uh, accessories not gonna be on there. So I'll work on that and then I'll wrap it up with electrical tape and do all that. But I need the engine to be in the car for that. And then of course, the next thing that I'll need to do is build a new rear cage uh, for the engine. Obviously, I need to have the engine sitting in there. Once I have it hanging off the transaxle, then I'll fabricate a nice rear engine cage that will protect it. And also, I'm gonna incorporate some motor mounts onto that rear cage to help support the weight of the engine so that it's not all just hanging off of the uh, Volkswagen transaxle. But what I was really doing a lot of work on is trying to find literature for this specific model year engine and the ECU and the wiring harness that goes with it. What I ended up finding is I found a guy who was talking about a three-day program that AC Delco has, or Chevy has, um, where you sign up for their program. They've got this website and it's really meant for uh, service stations. You subscribe to them, it's like $3,500 for the year. You subscribe to them, and then you get service manuals and part numbers and VIN lookups and really a lot of stuff that typically you can just get at the dealers, which is nice, but I'm, you, you're not gonna pay $3,500 just to get some wiring diagrams for your motor. Um, to get the service manuals for your specific motor or your the car that it came out of is like $350 to $400. Also, not gonna happen just so that I can get some wiring diagrams for this motor. But what I did find is that uh, that website has a three-day subscription, and I'm pretty sure that they set this up just for people like us. 
So for $20, I subscribed for my three days, um, put in the VIN number of the car, because I have the VIN number of the car that I took this out of. That gets me to the correct service manual. Buy yourself a nice, uh, nice new ink cartridge for your printer, and then print out what you need. So I printed out a service manual, and I looked up all of the things that I am going to need um, and then I printed them out. You can see I've, I've already highlighted some stuff as I've started doing some research. And uh, you know, you can print out component, component lookups. These are uh, pin layouts. These are wiring schematics. More pinouts. I mean, just gobs and gobs of information. These are, in their service manuals, they have explanations of the sensors and what they do and why. So you can print those out. They have this area here. Hey, bud. This area here, they explain certain, uh, they actually explain the sensors and how they contribute to how the EC, ECU is figuring out what it's doing. I mean, it's, it's incredible how much information they have in there. So you just do your three-day subscription. Now, of course, this is for Chevy only. I don't know about Ford or Subaru or, or any of that. But you do your three-day subscription and then you print out everything that you need like I did you make a little manual and then for twenty dollars you've got a service manual that has uh, all the information that you need here's a helpful tip I printed out two of them I have this one this is the one that I'm highlighting and taking notes in and I don't really care if I get it dirty or anything like that and then I've got another one that's uh, I'm not going to touch that I just stored upstairs in case this one gets so damaged I can't use it or if I need to make a photocopy of one of the pages that doesn't have notes and everything all over it. I also realized that when I picked up the motor uh, I had forgotten to get the ALDL connector so I went back and cut this out of the same car that this motor came out of and the uh, on this car because it's the drive-by wire the uh, the throttle pedal is electric and I forgot that when I pulled the uh, motor so I went back and I pulled the throttle pedal at the same time they charged me $16 for this throttle pedal and I also got the wiring with it and the ALDL connector so I'll need to add that to my total of $225 so really that's about it this is more of an update it's not super exciting but I wanted to uh, let you guys know about that website for the information so that if you guys are possibly trying to do something like this um, and you're like me and you're trying to do it without buying the pre-made harnesses and all that stuff, I wanted to show you where you can get the, uh, the schematics and your service manual for not too much money. Just wanted to give you an update on how I'm cleaning this up and uh, what should be coming up in the future because I think on Monday I'm going to be ordering the uh, adapter plate and then that'll be a big project hanging this up on the car and, uh, and all that stuff. So thanks for watching the update guys. Hopefully it's helping you out and hopefully I see you on the next video. Take care.